Hi, this is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. And now today we are in Beacon Hospital. We are going to be talking about radiotherapy treatment uh, with one of the physicians here. And also we have a patient who is a stage 3 lung cancer patient. We'll be talking to them about their own personal journey. Please join me in today's episode. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. We are talking about radiotherapy. Let's go. All right, uh, we are here today with Dato, Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim from Beacon Hospital. Thank you, Dr. for joining us today. Hi, thank you. All right, Dr. so first of all, I have main question. Okay. What is, could you briefly explain to us what is radiotherapy? Okay, radiotherapy is actually X-ray treatment or radiation treatment to treat tumour and cancer cells. Okay. okay. We are all familiar with radiation. Mm -hmm. We use radiation to take X-ray pictures. Uh, of our lung or foot or when we have a fracture or whatever but those are using low energy x-ray mm -hmm. so low energy energy x-ray just penetrates the soft tissue uh, and and you know just to 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 look at uh, imaging of tissues okay. to look at tissues to look at internal uh, uh, organs or whatever when you use CT scan however radiotherapy uses a much much higher energy okay for instance, like a diagnostic X-ray, you only use like 90 kV, 90 kilovolts. A machine like this uses 6 million volts wow, of okay. much higher energy X-ray to get a higher penetration and to get the cell kill. Mm, okay. Mm. And who actually needs this type of uh, treatment? X-ray uh, radiotherapy is actually indicated in a lot of cancers. Mm. So most major cancers uh, will uh, need some form of X-rays. Uh, either as a primary treatment or or, or, or as an adjuvant treatment that means you know uh, to give the extra uh, uh, radiation after surgery mm -hmm. so many tumors like we say so prostate cancers mm -hmm. head and neck cancers larynx cancers uh, even lung cancers uh, they all needs a ex you know can we can use radiation mm -hmm. uh, to treat all these various tumor sites practically anywhere in the body okay yeah sometimes like i say we use it up front mm -hmm. uh, as primary treatment sometimes we use it as additive treatment to surgery okay. or what we call adjuvant radiotherapy and sometimes we give it as palliation just to control pain or control symptoms okay mm -hmm. now talking about radiotherapy mm -hmm. uh, when a person goes through that treatment what actually happens to their body well actually radiation you don't actually feel anything okay you know radiation just penetrates mm -hmm. all the work is done internally in the cells okay what happens is when radiation passes through the body and it goes at cellular level mm -hmm. it damages the dna okay right so it interacts with the oxygen uh, inside the cells to cause uh, free radicals and those will damage the dna and these damage uh, is quite ex is so extensive mm -hmm. that the body cannot repair. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is that's why you don't see radiation uh, damage or radiation effects immediately. Okay. Radiation takes time because as the radiation damages the cell and the cells cannot grow, they die and eventually will be absorbed by the body. So the effects of radiation may take weeks or even months. Mm. Okay. Now talking about that, it's quite an interesting point that you made about damaging the cells. Mm -hmm. Now when you talk, tell a patient that we're going to damage your cells, it's quite, quite people are going to be like, eh, why are you damaging my cells? So how okay. does radiotherapy actually target that specific okay. cells? When we talk about radiation damaging the cells, I'm talking here more about tumour cells. Okay. okay. We try as much as possible to avoid mm. hitting the normal tissue and normal cells. Okay. We have a lot of new advancement, new technology, uh, new developments in radiation okay. where we can just focus on treating cancer cells without hurting or causing collateral damage mm. to the surrounding cells. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So that will help to prevent the complications. Okay. Yeah. Let's say a patient comes for radiotherapy treatment. I know it's a case by case basis, mm -hmm. but basically what is what do they go to? What do they feel after going is there a lot of side effects and things like that? Okay. So when they come to me, okay. 
I will have to sit down and explain to them to the process, mm -hmm. the processes. Now, modern day radiotherapy, we always use CT scan to image the patient. I understand. So, say for example, uh, they have a, 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 a cancer in the, like I say, in the in the nose. Okay. Yeah. We put, we, we tell them we, we, we put a, a like a plastic mask mm -hmm. that that uh, will immobilize the patient, so they remove. We do a CT scan and we use the CT scan for planning the patient's treatment. Mm -hmm. So we draw where the tumour is, where the target is. Mm -hmm. We also outline areas of good tissues mm -hmm. like the parotid gland, the spinal cord, the brain, the eye, mm -hmm. all the critical organs. All right. we, inform, we, we, do it, uh, we, we outline it on the computer so that we can avoid all these critical structures. Then we explain to them about the course of treatment. It takes six weeks. Uh, or seven weeks for the treatment. Now, depending on, you know, like for head and neck, we have to treat the whole throat. Okay. So they will have some side effects. They will mm -hmm. have side effects of difficulty swallowing, uh, loss of taste, a bit of sinus problem. They will undergo certain side effects, mm -hmm. but these are reversible. Come the end of treatment, two or three weeks later, they will slowly recover from the effects of the body of, heals of, itself. The, bo the body heals itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes it takes longer. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, sometimes, like, uh, you know, if we hit their parotid glands, their mm -hmm. salivary glands, sometimes the, they produce very little saliva and mm -hmm. sometimes that effect might be long-term or permanent. Mm -hmm. But by general, most of the side effects of radiation is reversible, is temporary. Okay. Yeah? But, like, you know, you have to be very careful. You do not damage the good cells, the normal structures. Mm -hmm. That's when you get the bad effects, when you're hitting normal tissue, and you're not careful in your planning process mm -hmm. and, 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 and the normal tissue receives a very high dose and you can, those damage can be permanent, permanent. and irreversible mm -hmm. and it's not easy to manage some of, uh, some of these symptoms. So you've got to have a very skillful radiation oncologist so, to do this. Now, um, we have to go on to um, other organs of the body, like you were saying, mm -hmm. one millimeter. Even though, let's say, I have uh, breast cancer or even liver cancer or mm -hmm. things like that, like I want to do it on my liver, but mm -hmm. once you hit radiation, doesn't it also affect the other organs of the body as well at that part? Or how do you manage that? Right. That's the beauty of a modern radiotherapy machine like this. Okay. You can do something called conformal radiotherapy or IMRT, mm -hmm. intensity modulated radiation, or VMAT, okay. uh, which is even more, uh, you know, more advanced technique of radiation. The first step you do is you do image guidance. Mm -hmm. A machine like this will take a picture of the patient, mm -hmm. and you align the patient accurately mm -hmm. uh, before you start treatment. Now, when you start the treatment. The inside, you can't see it on this machine because it's all built internally. Mm -hmm. There is something called a multi-leaf collimator. Okay. There is a leaf that interdigitates, mm -hmm. okay, and that moves to shape the tumor, follows the shape of the tumor. Okay? okay. So as this machine, as the machine rotates, and you can't see the rotation mm -hmm. because it's all internally, mm -hmm. it changes its shape. And at each different angle, it takes just the shape of the tumour. And you can see, you know, when you see normal structure, it shields it. Mm -hmm. When it sees the tumour, the jaws open up mm -hmm. and delivers the radiation. So it does this. Uh, one, you know, uh, at about sort of uh, one, you know, uh, one cycle, mm -hmm. you, it does four, four rotations okay. per second. Per so second. it's per oh. second, four rotation. Oh. So it's very, very, very quick. Mm -hmm. And the leaf changes shape. So that the radiation is confined to that, to specific. The to that specific target. So we try to minimize the collateral damage. Okay. 
Okay, so, so now uh, let's go on because doing research and people are if people are going to research about radiotherapy, there's a lot of things they find online. Now, one of the first things I found uh, is uh, this uh, study or this 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 this, this uh, uh, thing where they're saying radiotherapy actually contributes to lymphedema. Okay. Like I mentioned to you, uh, when I started my career in radiation, radiation therapy, we use very crude methods. Yeah. Now, lymphedema is seen mainly in breast cancer, mm -hmm. where the surgeons have removed the lymph nodes in the axilla and or in the armpit, and then we add radiation, mm -hmm. and the radiation dose is pretty high in the armpit. So this is like a secondary so, dose compared right. to the. So when you've already damaged the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm you add for the insult to the system mm. and the circulation in that particular uh, arm uh, decreases patients starts to complain of swelling in the arm nowadays i hardly see lymphedema mm. we you know with good radiation techniques surgical techniques and we don't irradiate uh, uh, lymph nodes that has already been removed we hardly see lymphedema mm. so uh, final question doctor uh, is um, Radiotherapy, does it affect, is there a lot of, uh, increases the chance of higher uh, other health problems in time? And what about, about fertility and people who are pregnant and okay. things like that? Very important. We do not give radiation if you're pregnant. Okay. Well, for pregnant, especially in the early first trimester. Okay. You know, it, it has, uh, you know, it can damage DNA. Mm can damage the fetal cells and it can cause a lot of problems, you know, okay. uh, develop fetal development problems. Yes, it can cause fertility, depends on where we do the radiation. Mm. Say for example, uh, I have a young lady with a cancer of the rectum mm. and I need to treat the pelvis, the ovaries are there mm. and so the dose of radiation that I give can ablate the hormone production and can later uh, cause fertility issues. Mm. Yeah, and same similarly in men. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's close to the testes, mm. uh, you can um, cause fertility issues. What about all the other organ damage? Well, it can cause damage to the other organs, um, but you try, like I say, avoid normal tissue. Mm. Okay. Say, for example, when you're treating the breast. When you're treating the breast, you will inevitably treat a little bit of the lung or sometimes even the heart mm -hmm. is in the way. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful to avoid or minimize the treatment to the heart or to the lungs. Mm -hmm. And, and by, by doing that, uh, you can avoid the long-term complication. Mm -hmm. If you treat too much lung, it will cause lung fibrosis. Yeah. And in the long term, uh, patients will have respiratory problems. Mm -hmm. If you damage the, the heart, uh, you will weaken the heart and in the long term and when I talk about long term it may be more than five years or ten years mm. after radiation uh, you may have complications mm. and we have seen this in some of the older techniques also we have to be careful when treating young kids yeah? so when you are actually treating the spine or the bone you can slow down the bone growth so they will not grow Normally. Normally, so they have a stunted growth. They will have uh, unequal growth if you are treating one side of the limb. You know, so all these things have got to be um, taken, into uh, taken into account and explained to the patient. So we try to avoid giving uh, too much radiation mm. uh, to kids, uh, especially when when they are when they are growing up, mm. or or even to babies, you know, up to four years old. We don't want to irradiate uh, irrad uh, irradiate the brain. Mm because it can cause uh, mental uh, development problems uh, later on because you will cause brain damage if you, you know, give radiation, high dose to, to, to little kids, okay. especially before they are four years old. Okay. All right, Ado. Thank you so much okay. for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We'll thank be back you. right after this. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar.
I was diagnosed with uh, cancer last year, mm -hmm. in August, by a medical practitioner mm -hmm. who is a doctor, but he practices uh, homeopathy medicine. Oh, okay. So, after knowing that it came from the lung that I did an operation, mm -hmm. so I went back to my doctor in Singapore, mm -hmm. in the uh, Parkway Medical Center, uh, Mount Elizabeth. I went to see doctor uh, and asked the doctor about his opinion. The doctor first thought it was not, uh, it was not cancer mm -hmm. because uh, he said it might be just a sar sarcoma or uh, some other infection, disease infection of the lung. Okay. But uh, he sent me to do PET scan. Mm -hmm. So I came back to Malaysia and did a PET scan in, uh, in Bangsa. There's an NGO hospital there. Mm -hmm. So they found out that I got adenocarcinoma. Oh. Then I went and see, on, on advice of friends, mm -hmm. I went and see Dr. Dr. Ibrahim, mm -hmm. who is my schoolmate. Oh, okay. Just to get an opinion of him, from him. Now, what uh, happened? like initial diagnosis when you found out that you actually had stage 3 lung cancer what uh, was going through your head at that time? Actually I expected it because the first doctor the first homeopathy doctor mentioned mm. most likely is adenocarcinoma because mm. I went for an x-ray mm -hmm. and he saw it under the advice of the radiographer so the radiographer said, uh, most likely it's cancer. Mm -hmm. So when I went to the PET scan test, it was confirmed. And the doctor was a bit brutal because he's an old man. Oh, wow. So after doing the test, he called me and Shafi, you got cancer. That's it. That's okay, it. Without, oh. without any... So I said, okay, well, I shall visit my doctor. Mm -hmm. So I went to see... Dr. Dr. Ibrahim at his house, in fact. Mm. We all we all are schoolmates, mm. so we went there. And uh, he's, naturally, lah, I got a bash, uh, ear bashing from him. <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't go and see him earlier. Yes, yeah. So, well, I took it with good stride. Mm. And he, I told him, I sorry, I asked him whether it is possible to have it removed. Mm. He said, he, he cannot make that decision. He sent me to IJM to see one of our schoolmates, so another uh, cardiothoracic surgeon. But when I went to see him, he said, the thing has spread to the chest wall, so it's not possible to do, to do uh, operation anymore. So he sent me back to the talk. The doctor said, well, the other option is to do radiotherapy and uh, chemotherapy. Mm. So I told the doctor, uh, I said, I leave it to you because you are the specialist. Mm. Okay, I don't want to get involved in it. Now, how was it breaking the news to your family? Well, it is, uh, it is a bit tough, but uh, I told them this is part of life. So, uh, in our family, we, we suffered uh, some casualty as far as cancer is concerned. Oh, wow. Like my late mother, mm. he got breast cancer, he passed away in 1985. Oh. Then my uncle, who has got lung cancer, he passed away in maybe 1988. So, we knew that. So, I went through the treatment and the first stage was uh, two chemotherapy mm -hmm. and five cyber knife operation. Oh. Cyber knife. Cyber knife, the machine has been dismantled. Mm -hmm. So, the, and the cancer subsided. Oh. In fact, all the market went down. It was so good and positive. Mm -hmm. Until about two months ago, I didn't feel good mm -hmm. around the, Area. I came back to see Dato. Dato said, Well, we do another PET scan. And we discovered that the thing has migrated here, somewhere near the, the chest area. 
So, fortunately, the machine, the new machine, Helison, uh, Helision was uh, installed. So the doctor said, okay, you go through the radiotherapy. Mm. Another 30 session, plus another two chemo. Mm. So I've just finished it last week. How do you feel now? I mean, going through the old sessions, I think going to chemotherapy also, it's, it's quite difficult. But going through chemotherapy, chemotherapy and also radiotherapy, how was, how did you go through it? I mean, like, how did you feel? Did you feel any side effects and things like that? Yeah, naturally, like uh, chemo, you have a little bit of side effects. But when I, when I recall what my late mother went through, mm. that one was even terrible. So, but now, I think because the, the advance in technology, so the medicine is good. Mm. And the side effect is not, not that... Uh, not that bad. Not that bad. So I managed to go through it. Although there are some days where you're down, but uh, you manage. All right. Um, final question: Your advice for people like you who are suffering from um, cancer. What would you say to them to keep them in good spirits? So, what are the type of attitude they have to change? Or some advice that you can give for them from a person who is. Yeah. I think, uh, although I'm not that, I don't have that authority yet to say, because I, I was only diagnosed less than a year. Mm -hmm. But to stay positive, you must make sure that you lead an uh, unstressful life. Don't think too much about things that happen around you, little, little things that you normally do. Just uh, focus on if you have hobbies, uh, you have some something that you like to do, please do and make yourself stress-free and also change your lifestyle. Uh, if you go to Mama's stall three times a day, maybe don't go anymore <laughs> and eat healthy food. Mm. Healthy food, I, I think most of the people suffer because, like me, I don't take enough vegetables. Fruits, you know. I think it's the Malaysian lifestyle. Malaysian lifestyle, yeah. because foods are abundant, yeah. and you tend to eat uh, eat uh, junk food more than that. But uh, it's okay to have a little bit. You know, there are some people who who lead a very very adventurous life, mm. but they're still okay. But I think you must balance it. Mm. Yeah, you mean, must have enough exercise. The most important thing is enough sleep. Mm. The problem with the, our generation now, we don't need to have enough sleep. Mm. Why? Because of the handphone. Mm. It's so easily. Last time, if you want to browse the internet, you need to, I mean, to wake up and sit on the chair, open up your laptop. Nowadays, you just grab and that's it. Yeah. You tend to get carried away. Yeah. Although it can give you a lot of wealth of information, but it disrupts mm. the lifestyle that you should be doing. Yeah. So I suppose uh, don't be, don't take it, uh, don't take it uh, negatively. That if you discover that you have uh, cancer, just uh, adopt or choose one of the method of treatment. There are some who, who just say, well, I just changed my lifestyle and see what happened. Mm. They don't even seek treatment. And, uh, but you have to choose. You have to choose and you have to stick to that. All right, thank you. This has been Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. Now today we actually talk to Datuk Dr. Ibrahim and also to Mr. Mohamed Shafi about uh, radiotherapy treatment. Uh, Mr. Mohamed Shafi shared his personal story about the disease, fighting the disease, fighting cancer as a stage 3 lung cancer patient. And also Dr. Dr. Ibrahim also shared with us the technology behind radiotherapy right now. Now, one thing that we have to take away from this episode is uh, radiotherapy treatment. I hope you all understand 
about the treatment more. There is this huge technology in treating cancer and uh, we just need to read up and also expose ourselves to this treatment to actually see what we need and what can actually help fight cancer. I also hope you liked Mr. Mohamed Shafi's story about his life, uh, what he should have done and also how he stays positive in fighting the disease. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like and follow us on all our social media platforms. My name is Dishan Kumar. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.